Hi, welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is mousse bologna. Of course, the main ingredient in our recipe today is mousse, ground mousse, but do not change the channel. You can substitute this meat with whatever type you enjoy. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to talk about the ingredients we're going to be using in it and tell you a story or two. So if that interests you, stick around and let's get started. So what we're going to be using in our recipe is liquid smoke and we're going to be using a um, raw cane sugar. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. Of course, we're going to have one and a half pounds of ground beef which today is moose meat and I'm going to be using pork. So again, if you don't have access to moose meat, which it is a moose bologna, and you, you're interested in knowing how to make bologna in general, you can substitute that with just regular beef. You can just use pork and something else, but we'll talk more about that. And what we're going to do is be using our mixer because I want to, to ground up everything nice and small. Um, three cloves of garlic, which is about one tablespoon full. I'm going to be using a chunk of uh, white onion and they, uh, in the recipe it said about one tablespoon full, so that's about good there. A teaspoon full of sea salt and a teaspoon full of the cane sugar. Before I start pulsing this together, this recipe was given to me by my friend, which was given to her by a close friend as well. And the recipe itself is over 50 years old. And if you guys are, are familiar with Newfoundlanders and Arbidorians, most of us love our bologna. And of course, adding mousse bologna is just absolutely amazing. We got, of course, recipes on there for bologna, and we can share those with you. But here in Newfoundland and Arbador, um, mousse season, and uh, a lot of our, I guess, neighbors, friends, go mousse hunting, and they will get mousse that lasts them all year long. And they're always looking for amazing recipes to make stuff with. And of course, mousse, mousse bologna, I mean, who don't like that? So before I get into a full story of that, just pulse these ingredients together into your mixer. And that's all you need to do there. I'm using about a cup of ground pork. You could use suet as well. And that's just fat from uh, your beef. Uh, and you can get that from your butcher. Um, and because moose meat is not oily at all, it's actually quite lean and dry. So you need something to give that little bit of uh, oiliness in it and uh, give the flavor, of course. So I'm just gonna blend this lightly, uh, take some of the moose meat in and alternate in there. Of course, I only got a small mixer, so I'm going to be doing this in sections, and of course, I won't need to show you all of that, but uh, trying to get uh, the mousse and the pork blended together, so that flavors together. Um, I've done this recipe by hand before, but it's quite difficult to blend up the consistency of the meat the way you need it to make it a bologna, to make it like bologna, but uh, if so, if you got a blender, that would work perfect. I'm going to be putting in here as well a half a teaspoon full of that liquid smoke and it's 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 an ickery smoke smell it's it's amazing if uh, um, you've had anything with ickery smoke in it before uh, it really blends well in there and having the garlic and, and uh, that cane sugar works well together I'm going to say if you don't have access to cane sugar I'm thinking a, a light brown sugar could work um, in its place or an organic sugar. I got a half a cup of water and you're going to blend this in gradually into this mixture. So the remainder of the water, 
And again, if you're watching this and you're saying to yourself, I don't have access to moose meat, why am I watching it? Please do watch it because if you like bologna, you could make this again with the ground beef that you got access to. Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple of recipes that you could make uh, by having this and uh, you're gonna love it. So definitely stick around there, don't leave, and blend that in. Okay, so after you got it blended together, I've got to take it all out of this blender bowl. Move this one here to the side. I'll take that meat off of that. And I want to put it in here. And then I'm going to tell you what to do next. Okay, so now that I got the, the moose meat pork out of the blender, I'm going to clean up here a little bit and then I'm going to show you what's next. So what we're going to need is a couple of pieces of clear wrap. You just put it down on your counters, pull one sheet off, and then put the chunk of ground mousse and pork down onto it, or again, whatever ground beef you're using. And now I was told that this recipe uh, was uh, owned by an elderly gentleman that his mom used to own it. Now I'm sure changes was made over the years because the way I understood it, um, uh, each person that made it, made it a little different, which made it uh, delicious for them and, uh, and that was good. So now what I'm going to show you what it looks like here and what we got to do to shape it like a bologna. So all you need to do is take a strip of this clear wrap and pull it on one side and then over on the other side, pulling it up to put it all the ways around because we're going to do this a couple of times so it'll stay in place and I also uh, uh, was told that uh, you know this this bologna is good for so many different uh, meals and of course here today I'm going to show you at least two I need to get another strip of clear wrap so the side that's joined, as you can see, I want to put that down onto the plastic because I don't want for it to pop open. And of course, again, I'm all about if you don't have the ingredients I got here today, if you can substitute it with ones that you can find, that is perfect because I don't want you to have to go out looking for stuff that uh, is not available. And so you want to make sure all the air is out of the plastic before you start rolling it. And I'm going to show you that. So what you're going to do is hold each side of the clear wrap. And then I'm going to move this plastic and get this sleeve out of the way. And you're going to kind of roll it. And you're going to keep rolling it until it tightens. If you need another piece of clear wrap, certainly uh, when you're making it that is fine I'm only using two air today and it works fine with that pretty much what you're doing is shaping it out to a small bologna or almost like a pepperoni or a salami um, and there's no preservatives in this mousse bologna it's just all natural ingredients so that's all you need to do there after you've done that just make sure that those pieces that you've tightened up on the sides you got tucked in because you don't want for it to untwist. Because what we're going to do now, this chunk of, um, I guess, prepared mousse bologna with all of those delicious ingredients in it is going to go into your refrigerator. Anywhere from 24 to 48 hours marinating in those ingredients. So if the 24 hour is good for you, take it out and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And if the 48 mark is good for you, that's fine too. So lucky for us, I got one done here in advance that's ready to go to the next stage. I'm going to take it out of the fridge. I'll show you that and I'm going to put this one in there. So this is the chunk that I put into the fridge and I made this well over 26, 27 hours ago and it's nice and 
uh, firm. Um, as well when you're mixing up the ingredients in your mixer if it's a little soft and hard to work with when you're uh, taking care of it put it in your fridge or the freezer for about 15 minutes to, to harden it up a little tiny bit more and then put it onto the plastic that's entirely up to you I didn't do it it was fine so what I'm going to do now is uh, take the plastic off of this chunk Put it onto a, a pan with a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to show you that. So the way you rolled it, you're just going to unroll it the same way just to release the plastic. And the same thing you just until you take the plastic off because now we're going to bake this in a preheated oven of 325 degrees you see the chunk is nice and firm for 30 minutes and what we're going to do part ways through that cooking time we're going to our uh, 15 minutes into it we're going to uh, from this stage roll it to the other side just so that both sides are going to get equally cooking so that's just 30 minutes there so I'm going to do that we're going to talk a little bit more about it so again, the oven um, heat is 325 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's 30 minutes on the first cooking time, turning it 15 minutes into, into it. Then after, I'll show you what it looks like at the 30 minute mark, and then we're going to then bring the temperature down to 225 degrees Fahrenheit and keep it in the oven for about an hour and 45 minutes or until you look at it and say, you know what, this is cooked, this is baked, I'm taking it out. And um, so I'll show you what that looks like at that stage. And as well, the beautiful dishes that we're going to serve with our delicious bologna today. Okay, so this is 15 minutes cooking. So what I'm basically going to attempt to do here now is flip this over probably a better way to do it um, but of course you know me pushing the bar on hot so just flip it like that now we're going to do the other side and pretty much I'm going to let you know for how long after the 15 minutes is up so back in the oven so I got the mousse bologna put back into the oven for another 15 minutes on 325 degrees Fahrenheit. When the buzzer goes off, I'm going to lower the heat to 225 degrees Fahrenheit, put the timer on for one hour and 45 minutes. It could be less, or if it's a bigger mousse bologna than what I got, it could be more. But I'll show you what mine looks like when it's baked. Our mousse bologna is baked. I'm going to take it out of the oven now and show you what it looks like. It smells amazing in here. And of course, I was able to keep Raymond's hands <laughs> from it. Just look. Yeah. How delicious. Oh, yeah. Picture that down on the place of old meat bread. Right? Now I'm going to put it here on this rack. I want for it to come to room temperature, but I've, you know I'm going to cut it before then. We're going to talk a little bit about that now. Now, of course, you know that we're not all about letting it come to room temperature, but uh, originally this recipe is made that you would have it over a two or three day period. So you let it go to room temperature, you refrigerate it, cut it off as you want it. At the third day mark, if you haven't got it all eaten, you cut it up what you want and freeze it. Well, in our case here, <laughs> yeah, Raymond is going to have it all eaten. We're going to be giving it away and yeah. and such. But I'm going to I'm going to cut into it. But I'm going to show you one that I did here in advance, and I've had it for uh, a couple of days, and I've been just shaving the meat off it making it into just fried pieces of mousse bologna and it's almost like a donair. I'm going to show you that. So just kind of stalling here, giving myself some room here before we cut on this one. But as you can see, I'm after just making slivers off this one and again I put um, just a little spur down through it that you would 
cook on your barbecue this one's a little chunky but and then all you got to do is just cut it in little sleeves like this and then fry it of course in the frying pan I'm going to show you what that looks like and I'm going to show you two ways we're going to be serving our bologna here today and now I'm going to cut this piece to show you this first just look I mean it's shaped the way a blona is in its package now usually blona has got wax over it, and of course this is your own made mousse blona and it's one of this delicious things it's no preservatives so you know it's all naturally made I'm gonna cut this piece off and you know what they say about the end piece some people don't like it but I'm just gonna pass that one over to Raymond because you know that one is going to be feeling the love for sure there oh. you go raymond and just look at this how oh, delicious perfectly cooked steam is coming out of it again they're telling us not to cut it while it's hot but you know what i'm going to fry up a couple of pieces of these now because this is going to be called our breakfast mousse bologna tastes just as good as it looks too do it oh yeah. wonderful now you know anyone would love this for their breakfast, dinner or supper. I'm going to put these two pieces right here on the side of my plate with a sunny side up egg, baked, homemade baked beans, homemade bread, some of that orange marmalade. Right? I mean say no more. And now on this side I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn this bread into a bologna sandwich but almost like a donair. Now just look at the slivers of this uh, bologna that we uh, cut off and now I'm going to make a sandwich from it. I'm just going to put this here and it's got cheese, it's got a delicious bologna that was fried and some onions and green pepper over it and some homemade bread. Of course a pickle if you want that on there. And I'm going to put some donair sauce over the top. Now, how good is that? I mean, really? You would pay a lot of money for this sandwich. Some salty pretzels, a nice breakfast, mousse bologna, an egg, baked, baked beans, homemade bread. I'll share all those links with you. All from this delicious homemade mousse bologna. I hope you're excited to make your mousse bologna today because this episode was made just for you because when I seen this recipe all I can think about I want to show my viewers I want for them to make this if you don't have access to ground mousse meat you could use whatever type that you got access to because this is a ground beef that's basically turned into a bologna and of course the spices that we use there today or the seasonings and ingredients that's the ones that this fine gentleman made years ago when his mom made and they loved it and of course Newfoundlanders and Labradorians love it as well so again you could use your discretion on that I'm gonna have a taste of this bologna can't wait to do I don't know if I want to dip it in that egg because it's nice and soft mm -hmm. it's got that little run to it or dip it here in the baked beans I think the baked beans Raymond is what I'm gonna have to do I, right yeah that sounds good <laughs> oh my goodness it's dropped to fork drop to fork delicious the flavors in there you can taste the garlic you can taste that hickory smoke from this liquid uh, smoked liquid I should say so delicious can't wait for you to make it two thumbs up by myself and Raymond I guess me and Raymond is going to be fighting over who's going to finish what here today because we get that delicious sandwich there that I'm eyeballing and this meal and I can have breakfast mm -hmm. any day any time of the day any day of the week it just it doesn't matter to <laughs> no. me no. but if you guys like this recipe please check it out in under this video we'll also share it with you on our facebook page on our website www.bonitaskitchen.com and of course right here on youtube 
And if you've got any more questions about this recipe or any of our recipes to date, you can email me at bonnythekitchen at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. And if you make this recipe or any of our recipes and you want to take a picture, you can send it to me at that address as well, bonnythekitchen at gmail.com. So again, this is it. As good as it gets. I'll also leave you some more information about uh, Moose Ear and Newfoundland and Labrador and a little bit more history about this Moose recipe here today on our website and of course we'll leave you that link. So I won't take any more of your time, we know it's precious. We thank you for spending a little bit of it with us here today. On behalf of myself, Raymond and our team here at Bonita's Kitchen, from our kitchen to yours, you have a wonderful day. to join us again on Bonita's Kitchen. Whoops! Join us by the sea A journey in culinary Always on the open door Bonita's Kitchen to yours Bonita's Kitchen